I wrote a Linegan plugin called FigWheel that pushes compiled closure script to the browser so that you can basically do interactive programming. I'm, I'm going to do a little demo and something to notice while I'm doing it is that I am not reloading the browser and that all the changes are happening as I save my closure script file. Another thing to notice is that the program is running and that all the changes are being applied to the running stateful program. So first, let's change a little DOM and see how quickly changes get applied. So I'm changing the button from do art to start and it just happened immediately. And let's change it back to art, save the file, and again. We get it back. Start is a much better name. So we can just eliminate the button. It's gone. Eliminate, save, it's back. So if we start the program, here we see Flappy Bird, and Flappy Bird is not oscillating. And in, in the real game, right here, Flappy Bird, before you actually start playing, he's oscillating. So let's go add that functionality to the game. We're going to go up here to the top where I update the bird. And we're going to create a function called sine wave. It's key. So we're going to base the sine wave on the time delta. Keep a reference to the state. Flappy bird has a flappy y value. And that's what we want to associate with the sine function. So we'll give it an amplitude of say 60. So it'll move up and down 60 pixels and get the sign and the sign will be of the time delta. Excellent. So there's a naive sine wave. Let's hook it into the update function for the flappy bird. There we go. Save the file. And Flappy Bird is bouncing up and down at the top. So I forgot to give it uh, Flappy's initial offset, which is a start Y. So let's give it start Y. It's beginning Y position on the page. And then add that. Now Flappy's in the middle, but still bouncing around frenetically. So the time delta has the wrong granularity. Let's divide that by something big to smooth this out. There we go. Moving very slowly. So let's divide it by something less. OK, moving a little more quickly. And let's divide it by something less. That's actually kind of, that works. But I think it's moving up and down too far, so let's make it 30 instead. And there we go. That works. Great. Now again, these changes are happening in real time. It's fun. So let's check out jumping. That is a big exaggerated jump. Okay, so let's change the jump value, the velocity, to something smaller. And now we'll jump and you'll see that the jumping's much lower. But let's, that's still kind of big. Let's see what a smaller value looks like. That's a predictable, that's a small range of oscillation for the jump so people can fit it in between some pillars. But let's go back to the 31 because it looked a little too small. All right. So there's our jump. Let's add the pillars back in. And where did I? I commented them out there. I didn't comment them out there. Let's, let's. Oh, I took them out of the DOM. Put them back in, and then you'll see the pillars show up. And they are moving incredibly slowly. So let's change the velocity pillars or actually the whole scrolling action let's get them all moving 
a little faster. Let's see how this jumping interacts with the... Jumping's too high. Let's change it back to 21. All right, and so now you can definitely get between these big gaps, but let's make the gap a little smaller. There we go. And the gaps change. Presto change -o. It's really hard for me to get used to this. Like, or actually very easy to get used to. It, it seems like this is how programming should always have been done. Anybody watching who's not a programmer would think, isn't that how you program? All right, we're going to turn collision back on and turn scoring back on. And so it collided with the bottom. Redo art. Let's actually rename that restart. And let's play. Well, this is obviously a little easier than the regular Flappy Bird. But there you go. Uh, live coding Flappy Bird.